okay guys welcome back to my channel um <laughs> i just realized that i've been talking for like several minutes and i did not record i did not press the record button okay so um i thought i was guys i was just going to film a video about some of the questions you guys have asked me um on the videos i filmed um you know at work in my job basically what i do in my work and how to get into the field um about the exam so many questions and i've actually addressed i've answered these questions um directly i answered people that asked me these questions directly but i thought it would be a good idea to also have um a video addressing these questions on my on my youtube channel so it's pretty much a q a session you guys already asked me the questions i've already answered but um i'm going to make it a video anyways um so yeah let's go straight to the video because i already started the video before. i already started talking and then realized i didn't press record anyways <laughs> so the first question is what was on the test um i'm just going to give you like the different topics that you need to kind of um know before you you know before you go for the test and also um on the our PSGT website there is actually um like a breakdown of what you are going to get on the test so they actually give you like terminologies all the things they want you to focus on when you study it's on the website so you can actually get those things on the website um if you want specifics on what's going to be on the test okay so you can get that on your website but like um i could just give you some of some of the topics that were on my exam i don't remember everything but i'm just gonna give you anyways so there's calculation so you know calculating your total sleep time um your um um calculating total sleep time cal there's calculations there is um sleep stages identification of sleep stages um definition of arousals you know um respiratory events being able to identify your respiratory events um different um sleep disorders being able to differentiate between each one and also um you know i think they will also give you scoring as well so they will give you like an epoch and tell you what is this what is happening here or what is the sleep stage also you need to know your arrhythmias all this is already on the RPSGT website, so you can pretty much find these things on the website anyways. Um, but yeah, your arrhythmias and um, sleep stages, arrhythmias, the different questionnaires that you have um, for measuring like, you know, sleep disorders and whatnot. For example, the airport sleepiness scale questionnaire, which is, um, which measures your um, sleepiness level during different situations on a scale of zero to three, right? And the total score is 24. And if you get, um, I think 10 and above or something like that it means you have a high tendency to be sleepy during the day and during activity so um, yeah so being able to know the different um, questionnaires what each one does and the difference between each one um, I'll just go to the next question um, the sleep techs only work night shift so when you start out as a sleep tech you only you, you are going to be working night shift because um, the patient come at night to sleep right so they come to the lab at night to sleep so you are going to be mostly doing um night shifts and then as you i think as you go along in your shift and the more experience you get you are going to start doing daytime studies but it depends also on your location right because some locations don't um in some locations the night techs don't run the sleep the daytime studies um we have techs that run the daytime studies in, the, in my location in the location i work at i i do the daytime studies right so i do the daytime studies because i mostly work days um, so I run the daytime studies. Um, the daytime studies are the MSLT, MWT studies. Um, the nighttime studies is just the PSG study, right? Or nocturnal, nocturnal sleep. Yeah, nocturnal polysomnogram. Polysomnogram um, is the nighttime study. So when you first start out, you most likely start out as a night day, and then I guess with more experience, you can um, move on to doing daytime studies. Um, is it hard? <laughs> I won't say it is hard actually. I won't say it is hard. Because like it's like it's very repetitive. It's very repeti repetitive, repetitive, repetitive. <laughs> so it's like once you get into the flow of things, it's like you're pretty much doing the same thing every night you come into work. You're like setting up your patients, putting them to bed, and then monitoring them throughout the night, right? So that's pretty much the um, the night tech duty. So pretty much monitoring your patients throughout the night, and um, the daytime study. Also, you need to be able it won't be hard if you know like if you know your theories right if you know you know oh yeah what i'm seeing here is sleep stage two right what i'm seeing here is an this particular arrhythmia so you know knowing your having your theoretical knowledge helps you to um helps make it easier when you're working you get so having your theoretical knowledge helps make it easier when you're working at night and even during the day as well um so yeah i won't say it's hard it's just you, with my experience you get used to it um advice to someone interested in a sleep tech um 
interested in being a sleep tech but worried you, are, you aren't smart enough <laughs> um as i said right i don't think anyone is smart enough to do anything to be honest but with um education and you know teaching yourself how to do something you get better at it and you know how to do it right so i won't say you know you should think oh you're not smart enough i won't say you know you should think that way don't don't think you're not smart enough to do something it's like you have to learn how to do something right and with experience and with the practice you get better at it so it's it doesn't require you to be the smartest person or to be a genius to get into the field of sleep medicine or be a sleep tech all it requires from you is to practice practice learn the terminologies and actually once you become a sleep tech the more you see these different things the easier it will be for you to easily identify oh my gosh yeah that's a pvc oh yeah that's a pac Right? So the, the longer you work as a sleep tech, the better you get at it and you have better again, um, better knowledge of what you're seeing and what you're collecting during the night. But um, the sleep techs, they don't, they don't do, they don't analyze the, the, the study. If you're going to be a scoring tech, a scoring tech is the one that does the, you know, the final, not the final, because the doctor, the doctor makes the diagnosis. But the, the scoring tech scores the study. It's um, the scoring tech assigns sleep stages, um, arrhythmias, and all those things. The scoring tech makes the final um, analysis of the study. But you know, the night tech just collects, just collect, right? And if there is something that comes up during the night that you're not sure of, and you suspect that it might be a um, significant, it might be major, or it might be life-threatening. There is always there is always a doctor on call that you can easily call and be like, you know, this is what I'm seeing. I don't know what this is. I'm not sure if it is severe or if it's, you know, I don't know. So can you like direct me? So the doctor on call would give you directions on what to do next. Um, yeah, the scoring tech, same thing. If there is anything you don't know, just ask the doctors. Um, the doctors are there to kind of help you. You know, you have others, other co-workers, right, that you can also ask um, for help during the night. Um... Um, so a question that was asked is am I just a scoring tech or I work night too? So sometimes I work night, sometimes um but most mostly I score. So I am actually the team lead for my location. So um I make the schedules for the night techs. So I schedule the night techs to come in for their night shift. And um if I can't maybe there's a sick call or you know there is um if I can't find a tech to cover a night, I just work the shift myself. So with the way my schedule is set up, I don't have to work nights except if it is needed except if i can't there's a, the, a tech calls in sick or um um yeah a last minute cancellation or something like that then i work the shift but i score most of the time i score my studies most of the time and i do like administrative tasks because i'm between it so i have to you know, make schedules um other supplies for the lab and all those things so yeah i only work nights when it's needed i don't want the video to be too long and i'm already on eight minutes um how can you get started in the career path do you need to go to college um for my particular job so i only did so you need to have a science background a lot of the texts that we have a lot of them did psychology biology health science um in their in their um as their major university in their undergrad and then for the sleep tech itself to be a sleep tech um for my for my particular the company i work for um they actually train you to be a sleep tech so you come with your undergrad degree you know with your knowledge of science with your background knowledge of science and then they teach you to be a sleep tech so they train you and you know educate you on basically what you need to know to be a sleep tech but i think it's different in the u.s i think there are some colleges that actually offer the program so i would just advise that you look at the area so the, the country you are in the area you are in and look at what how to get into the field in your area but my own particular company i just apply to the company and then they train you um during the training your pay is less because it, your starting pay is, is very is little really <laughs> because it's like yeah you, you don't have any experience so you know we are going to train you so you know we, we don't want to pay you as much as you would get but after the training then your pay goes up um what else do you work in a hospital do i work in a hospital sleep lab in a hospital sleep lab or an independent sleep sleep lab i actually work in a um in an independent health facility so ihf um in, a, in an in private lab in a private sleep lab so it's owned privately by the owner <laughs> and um yeah you can also work in a hospital as the question says you can actually work in a hospital as well um okay so the next question do i think there are enough sleep techs jobs even prior to covid19 um honestly the job the job availability is very very little okay there's not a lot of job vacancy as a sleep tech 
um except if because the thing is once once you and a lot of people actually quit because the thing is working night is hard i'm not even lying working hard um working night shift is difficult so a lot of people tend to quit after like a few um a few months or a few um or maybe a year of working a lot of people quit so in that instance there's always like a vacancy there's always job opening i think every year or like if every few months but like the thing is once we hire the techs we, there is no particular need to um hire someone else because it's like we hire techs for full-time shifts right and maybe we, for my particular lab now there are only like six of us okay there are only six of us working there um it's not something that you can just be you know um hiring people anyhow it's only when a tech quits that there's an opening right so if someone has to quit before there can be an opening and you know there are different locations too um different locations in different cities so you need to look at what's in your city and what's in your area and for the job actually for the job actually um a lot of the techs are usually referred by someone that already works there so you know if i already work there and i can count how many people have already referred to the job <laughs> okay so a lot of the people that are currently work there are, were referred by somebody that was already working there um yeah i just sleep text in demand as i said not really it's not really it's when someone quits that there is a job opening okay so like once we hire our text there is really no need to hire someone else it's just that's it <laughs> so six people and six people to to um to work each night of the week uh what else do i like the job um i'll say i like the job because i like the science of it I like to understand the human brain, right? I like to understand what, what happens in your brain when you sleep. I like to see those things. I like to, um, and also with the job as well, there are actually um, Friday rounds. It's called Friday rounds, where um, they just discuss articles, what's happening in the, in the sleep, sleep medicine field, the research that has been done, you know, why, um, you know, basically the science of things. We get that every every week right so yes i like the science of it i struggle sometimes with the patient interaction because i'm not very i'm not a, i'm not a um a people person right so sometimes i struggle with the patient interaction but like i just love to learn about the medicine so i like the job in that in, in that sense um in the sense of being the team lead it's difficult sometimes because it's like um after you've scheduled your your text and then someone calls in sick and then you are required to cover the shift but then me i've already made plans for my day right i already made plans for my day i already have things i want to do but then you're also required to just stop everything you have to do in your life and just come in and work the night so yeah i don't like that part of it and i also don't i like to sleep at night okay <laughs> so sleeping sleeping during the day sometimes is difficult for me so when on days i work night shifts i'm not fully rested and i am tired because i didn't get enough rest um um are there usually a lot of cancellations currently because of the covid there's a lot of cancellations and i feel like a lot of times when the referring physician sends the patients to come for a sleep study they don't they don't see the significance of their sleep a lot of people don't understand the significance of, of their sleep because they're like oh i didn't get enough sleep today i'm going to i'm going to like catch up on sleep during the weekend right and it's not something that is normal i don't you can't there's something called sleep debt 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 okay and you can't catch up you can't catch up on your sleep <laughs> you cannot be like oh okay i only get i only get four hours today i'll get four hours tomorrow get, and then on the weekend i'll sleep for 12 hours you are like you are, you are um ruining your sleep schedule you still have to keep the same schedule as the as the weekdays you work so it's it's easier for you to it's easier for you to just you know um continue work during the weekdays right but yeah a lot of people don't understand the significance of their sleep so there are cancellations because they're like i'm sick i don't want to come in <laughs> or translations in the sense that some people also have like you know anxieties about sleeping outside you know sleeping in a different location in a different space for the first time so a lot of people are also anxious about that um during covid a lot of people have been anxious about you know getting infected because ooh, honestly we won't be anxious so a lot of people have been worried about that as well so um prior to covid the cancellations were not as bad but you know with the covid a lot of people are, are cancelling and people don't want to come in for this it's for this <laughs> um why why um, okay so what don't i like about the job i i don't like um working nights when i'm not fully rested right i don't mind working the night shifts like i enjoy doing it because i even enjoy working night shifts because when I collect my signals and I know that my signals will be perfect, will be beautiful because I know what I'm doing. Okay, sometimes they're not usually perfect, they're not usually beautiful. Um, as a scoring tech, you just have to score whatever signal you get, right? If the tech did not put in as much effort to make the signals look good, you just have to score it like that. You just have to just score it however it is, okay? 
you guys i'm, I'm sweating you just have to score it however it is i think i'm just going to turn, <laughs> I'm gonna turn on the car and turn on the ac um yeah so you just have to score it to study however it is uh what else how do you get into the job without clinical experience as i said your science undergraduate degree so your science background um allows you to, to um get allows you to be qualified for the job and then when you get the job um you can get your you can um get your um on job experience um a lot of people that I, when i started i didn't really have a lot of clinical, clinical experience and i did the job specifically i took the job specifically to get clinical experience and um yeah to work with patients get a lot of clinical experience that's why i actually applied for the job um what did i what did i study to pass the exam and that's like the last question i have here um I, I studied a lot of things so you can actually go online i think i found like a free a free textbook online you don't have to buy you don't have to buy anything so um i just went online and i studied the textbook um i found online and um with my own job experience because even while i was studying i was still i was still working so you know i could get understand better understanding of sleep st um, scoring sleep stages respiratory events like i knew the information because i was already on the job and i you know i know what what um they all look like so it was a little bit easier for me to write the exam because i had experience with that right but going from a night tech without you know any scoring experience it's usually harder because it's like okay yeah I, there's a lot of, a lot of things that you are not you're not you are not um expected to focus on when you are the night tech because as i said the night, night techs whew, i talked too fast sorry guys as as i said the night techs only work only collects the study right they set up the patient put the patient to bed and just let the study run by itself they don't do much um but then as a scoring tech you you have to be able to um you know identify your sleep stages you have to be able to know all those things like correctly know them it's not just know them in passing no you actually have to know them to be able to score a study correctly accurately so um yeah so i had that experience and it was easier for me to study and know that um what else um i also like did some practice questions and i think you will also find practice questions on the on the um, on the RPSGT website, you will find some questions. Once you, I think once you apply for the for, to write the exam, I think I give you some materials to prepare to prepare you for the exam. Um, I did two weeks of focused study. I did two weeks of focused studying. To, I even had to go to the library, guys. <laughs> I'm like I went to a public library because I'm like I gotta pass this exam, okay? Because it was also expensive too. So I'm like I have to pass this exam. This is no joke, okay? And um, yeah, uh, what else? Yeah. Um, Go online, you find a lot of materials online that you can use to study, and um, yeah, um, yeah, I think that's everything about for the questions I got. I went through my channel to look at all the questions that I, I was asked, so I'm able to address all these questions because they are like recurring questions. A lot of people just ask the same questions. Um, yeah, if you want to get into the sleep, the sleep medicine field, you know, you can, and it's a very good opportunity for you to get your clinical experience. If you are planning to apply to you know um, masters your master's degree or your um med school or whatever it's a very um good opportunity to get clinical experience without you, know, you get clinical experience and you also get paid so it's not a volunteering you don't just volunteer to get clinical experience you're actually working and getting your clinical experience and getting paid okay um yeah thank you guys so much for watching this video i think i'm going to go do what i have to do now um thank you for watching the video and i'll see you in my next one peace